Today we're going to be talking about how to calculate the first several terms in a sequence of partial sums. And in this particular problem, we've been asked to calculate the first several terms of this sequence, n divided by 1 plus the square root of n, from n equals 1 to infinity. Now, before we talk about how to calculate the first terms, I want to, as a reminder, make sure that we understand the difference between a sequence and a sequence of partial sums. So in a regular series here, we might have the series a sub n, right? that's different than how we denote the series of partial sums s sub n. So a sub n is our typical series, s sub n is our series or sequence of partial sums. Now when it comes to a regular series we might have some regular series like for example 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? The series of partial sums will be each one of these terms added together with the terms before it. So the first terms will be the same, right? One and one. But then the second term, I'm going to add two to the first term in my series of partial sums. So one plus two gives me three. Then I add the next term to that. Three plus three gives me six. To six, I add four and I get 10. To 10, I add five and I get 15. And I could keep going. So you can see how these series are different. We have the regular series A sub n, the series of partial sums. We're taking partial sums of this series. In other words, the sum of the series up to the given point. So 10 is the sum of the series up until the fourth term of the series. So that's why we call it the series of partial sums. So in order to calculate the first terms in the sequence of partial sums here, what we want to do is just start plugging in values of n based on whatever we're given here. So we're given in this particular problem n equals 1, so we start with n equals 1. So we say at n equals 1, we plug in 1 to our series here, and we get 1 divided by 1 plus the square root of 1. And of course, when we evaluate that, we'll get the square root of 1 to be 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And so we get a value of 1 half, which is equal to 0 0.5. And we can just add a couple extra zeros because we know we're going to need them later. Okay, so then we plug in a value n equals 2. And we can just keep doing this, right? We'll get 2 divided by 1 plus the square root of 2, and if we evaluate that, we'll get approximately 0.8284, that's an approximate value, but remember, because we're dealing with the sequence of partial sums, we have to add this value, the value of the second term, to the previous value that we got, so we have to add that to 0.5. 0.8284 plus 0.5 is going to give us the value of the second term in the sequence of partial sums, which is approximately 1.3284, and we can round that to about 328. So let's just do one more term. We'll get n equals 3. We'll get 3 over 1 plus the square root of 3. When we evaluate that on our calculator, we'll get approximately 1.098 or so. But remember, that's only the third term of a sub n. In order to get the third term of s sub n, we need to add it to our previous value of 1.328. When we do that and we round, we get approximately 2.427 for the third term in our sequence of partial sums. So remember, the value we get here when we just plug in our value for n directly is the value of a sub n. When we add it to the previous term, we get the value in the sequence of partial sums, s sub n. So here's how we generate the values of s sub n. And we can just keep going, n equals 4, n equals 5, n equals 6, and we just add it to that previous sum that we found. What we'd see is that we get approximately 3.760 for n equals 4. For n equals 5, we'd get approximately 5.305. For n equals 6, we'd get approximately 7.044, and we could keep going. One thing we can say, just looking at this sequence of partial sums, though, is that the sequence appears to be divergent because this value just keeps getting larger and larger and larger, and in fact, the change between each term keeps getting larger and larger. This sequence of partial sums, S sub n, appears to be divergent or just appears 
divergent. And that's one conclusion that we can try to draw from the list of terms that we've calculated here.